Greetings and welcome to SORT Scientific Space Program episode 5. Uh, we are moving time forward a bit to the next relevant event, which is the Moho lander probe's arrival at Moho. So first we need to do some uh, adjustments to make, to make us uh, pass really close to Moho, to reduce the amount of delta V we need to get into a good orbit. And uh, then we get into the sphere of influence, and we need to do a monstrously big burn to get into a captured orbit. And this is where our nuclear engine really shines. We have basically one tank of fuel, this stretched tank you see here. And this tank is enough to get us from a completely hyperbolic orbit into a captured circular orbit and more. First we use up those small small radial tanks, but we ditch them quite soon because they, they were pretty much used up on our way here. And uh, then I need to redo this maneuver because I inadvertently lowered my periaps a bit and we are quite close to Moho as it is and we do not want to accidentally crash into it. That would be unfortunate. So we're doing some science readings uh, as we pass low over Moho to get the space close to Moho biome scans. And we wait wait with the trans transmission until we are on the day side. We have uh, more solar panels than we could ever need here close to Moho, but they don't work in the shade. Unfortunately, we have not invented that technology yet, but our scientist assures us that if they get enough funding, they will make a breakthrough. Anyway, we have ourselves an orbit, and we have also gotten ourselves onto a sub-orbit to land. And uh, I want to land quite close to the Terminator, because, well, the sun's probably really, really hot. I don't know that that simulated properly, but... You know, pretend that it's really hot on the day side, and we don't have lights, so we don't want to land on the night side. And right about around the Terminator, we should have shadows casted in a uh, beneficial way. So we do our burn, and we are dropping down a bit too fast, so we need to <laughs> compensate for that. The, the disadvantage, of course, of using the nuclear engine is low thrust to weight ratio. Well, it's good enough for uh, for this stage, but uh, yeah, we're almost out of fuel here, so we're gonna ditch it and switch to the internal engine. And there we go. So then we now we're oh, that's close. I did not really realize the ground was that close. Let's fold up the solar panels and prepare for landing. So I want to go over here to where the ground looks a bit more flat. And there's a shadow, so we're gonna just kill vertical velocity like so and touch down. Beautiful. Apparently with the reaction wheel, the lander can stand up on one leg just using the torque. So here we are, we have landed at Moho. Let's go ahead and do all the science we came here to do and transmit it home so we can discover new things. And actually I wonder if we get a different reading if uh, one of these pods are in the shade. So. Because we have so much fuel left in the lander, I'm gonna just try to rotate it a bit, like this. Now let's see. Do we get different science? Uh, the answer is no. But we got a lot of science. And we unlocked this atmospheric sensor. And we're gonna test it on Kerbin using a traditional Kerbal method. And that is continuous explosion and barely controllable vehicle. So, yeah, in this stage, it's uh, it's pretty uncontrollable. You can control the pitch by rolling it, but, yeah, not, not a very good design. But we got the atmospheric sensor up into the atmosphere and enabled it to do readings. And with the parachute, we should be able to retrieve it and get lots of science. Now, it turns out that using these batteries combined with just a few solar panels does not provide enough power to accurately or sufficiently transmit all the data that this thing gathers. So we're gonna have to consider that when we build things around this. 
But yeah, I would love to take this piece of equipment to Eve or Lathe or Duna or all of those places. Meanwhile, in orbit around the sun, approaching Duna, we have our Duna craft. And we are doing a correction to get ourselves close and comfortable to Duna. We are going to try an arrow capture maneuver to save on fuel, because we are actually rather tight on the fuel budget here. We have no nuclear engines. The best engine we have is the Poodle, with a specific impulse of 390 seconds, which is good but far from great. And of course we have this extra fuel tank, which is almost empty, but it still has enough fuel to be useful and to justify carrying it around. But first things first, we're gonna get into Duna orbit, and uh, with some help from the error braking calculator, I figured out that 14 km or about would be a good height for an error capture, or at least uh, so it says. So we're just gonna do it, try this. See if we get any re-entry flames coming from uh, inter interplanetary space. Probably having a quite high speed relative to what's common around these parts of space. So we're coming down into atmosphere and no flames. And we're past periapsis and we have not captured yet. So I'm going to use this poodle engine to slow us down. Because as long as we have a captured orbit, it doesn't matter how how it looks, because we can just do another error breaking. And this is where we stand now. So we're just gonna have we can go around the orbit once and error break again, because that's the most fuel efficient way to do it. And we took some science readings while we were close to do now. Of course we did, that's why we're here. So we just go out to periaps. No, this is the apoapsis. It's important to keep your abscesses organized so that you don't get them confused and mixed up or worse, you get them in the place of each other. That would be really bad. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna air break again and this time the calculator also says 14 kilometers. So I can only assume I got a faulty value the first time around. So we're gonna try 14 kilometers. Now, if we were to error break too aggressively and uh, not get up into orbit again, that would not be a big deal because we, then we would just ditch the external fuel tank, count it as a loss, and land. We would still land with full fuel. The disadvantage would be that we would not have the fuel tank sitting up in orbit waiting for us so that we could refuel before we go home. So. Now we have captured and have a decent orbit, so we're just going to circularize that. I think I already did that off camera. So we have a stable orbit and uh, we're going to tend to the unmanned probe that's coming just behind us and going to set up its encounter because this wing, this thing's also going to try to aero capture. And this probe still has the drive stage attached because going to Duna requires a lot less fuel than say Moho or Jewel, which the other will the other two probes of the same series went to. So with the probe coming in here, we are... Yeah, we're gonna have to adjust this again a bit. Now, with two vessels in the Duna system, it makes sense for one of them to visit Ike. And that's not going to be Duna 1, our manned craft, because that craft is only designed to land on Duna and return to Kerbin. It doesn't have fuel enough to do anything else. So, this probe is going to Ike eventually. Oh look, re-entry flames! For the briefest moment we had re-entry flames on Duna. I don't think I haven't seen that before. So, it appears our air capture was successful and we are on a rather eccentric orbit. I wonder if we can just uh, boost ourselves up and get an icon counter, but no, because we are on a retrograde orbit. I, I in accidentally put both these crafts on a retrograde orbit, so we're gonna have to rethink the celestial encounters if we're going out to Ike. So this probe is just gonna wait in orbit until we have a good encounter, or a good encounter opportunity. Meanwhile, these guys are going to land. And we have brought parachutes, and we have engines, and landing legs, this should work 
landing on Duna is quite hard, especially if your craft is this big. Uh, it weighs quite a lot because it's full of fuel. We are coming in here, we are error breaking as much as we can, and it looks like we're gonna land either in the canyon or just on the edge of it. Either way is very interesting. Coming up on 500 meters, parachute deployment, using the engines to break our descent. Coming down, need to slow, and touchdown! Good, nothing exploded! That's what I call success. So, we are on Duna surface. And let's get the Kerbals out to do some research. Actually, let's do some science before that. Let's call Hope, tell them how we're doing, let them know we're still alive, and then let's go out and uh, grab a fistful of dust, and then get back in. Well, it would be kind of unfair to the rest of the guys if only one, one Kerbal was allowed out of the surface. So we're gonna get them all out first. Flag, that's important. Duna landing site. For, for science. I never have any interesting to say for these flags. It's it's terrible. So let's get the guys out. Let's take the reports. Not that we can use them, but but anyway. And yeah, let's let's go back in. There's nothing really to do out here. We can only store one sample, so yeah. Well yeah, let's repack the shoots. We're gonna need those back home. And speaking of home, we are going home in the next episode, because this has dragged on for long enough. So next episode, this one is going to go back home, we're gonna go to Ike, and uh, I hope I will see you then. Thanks for watching, and uh, bye!